All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Bill Tabrick. Welcome to my shop. Today, the shop is in Diamond Head, Mississippi, and we're going to look at ratcheting starters. They're a huge pain in the butt. We're doing another video of how to more easily correct this, but this is an in-depth look at a ratcheting starter. So a ratcheting starter, the Benix will pop down on you, and without high RPMs, it's not going to come back. So we're going to show you how that actually works. This is part of the ratcheting starter. That's the Bendix drive. Basically, when, it, uh, when the engine starts up, it flings it the other way. When you want to start the engine, it turns in this manner, right? And once the engine starts up, it'll fling this gear and allow it to spin quickly. This is a little booger right here that keeps that Bendix extended. So many people, they put these in tractors and um, old cars, boats, and this one is out of a, an airplane. So this Bendix will pop out and it gets stuck out here and people for the life of them can't figure out how to get it back and of course it stays engaged in the flywheel. That's the booger right there. You've got three square threads coming out. One, two, three. But if you notice, this one has no catch. This one has a catch. This one has no catch. So only one of these has a catch. Now this is the collar that goes on there. And if you can look down in there, there's a button. And those buttons are right here. There's two of them. Why there's not three, I don't know, but that's the life. That button, let's say it's in here, it won't let it come back. This, when the engine kicks this, the centrifugal force spins it very quickly, and these buttons will spit, uh, extend out because of the centrifugal force, and then allow this to come back here into the ready-to-start position. So that's how it happens. We engage the starter. And it clicked and it won't come back until centrifugal force throws it out like this and then allows it to come back now on the opposite end of it it's slightly lower right here what that does when that comes over there to there just like that the same buttons kind of stick in this little crevice and prevent the bendix from vibrating out and shattering on the flywheel while the engine's in operation. But that's how it works. So now we're going to take and basically put it together. All right? Now this can be a pain in the butt for sure. So we, we want to make sure that these buttons are lined up properly, and they are. We have one button that's on the ratchet. So we're going to put that right there like that. I'm going to take my gloves off. That's one of the plungers. It goes in there just like so. And the spring goes in there. Now you don't want these, these will fling all over the daggone place as my son and I have spent an hour looking for them. That's kind of like a freeze plug right there, the real small one, okay? So we're going to take that, push it right here, and as hard as we can, push it in there. Yep, see it tried to pop out, and kind of lodge it down in there, hold it with our fingernail, give it a little tap. We do not want that taking off on us. Yep, and it still took off on us. All right, so we're going to put it in there. If somebody's got a better way to do this, put it in the comments. All right. There we go. Okay, so there's one installed, and that's not the ratcheting one. That's the ratcheting one. But you notice that sticks right there, right? 
the torsion of the starter will engage it and you can you can actually see it kind of fling boom all right now that's not in all the way we're not done yet we're going to take the next plunger okay Put it in there, make sure the cup's the right direction. Go like that. Now we're gonna, just for fun, simulate it. We're holding that down a little bit. This, this is coming out, the starter's engaging. It's the, the Bendix is engaged in the flywheel and you're gonna hear it click. Do you hear it click? And it won't come back. That's the heartache that everybody has right there and that's what's causing it but it's as designed. Don't get a hammer and start slamming on it. You just ruin a, a starter that you probably can't hardly get parts for anymore. And you can see if this spins very quickly with a centrifugal force would try to throw that outwards and it will throw it outwards fighting the spring and allowing the bendix to disengage so there we go putting that in there just like that and again what do we got him oh i done broke my fingernail backwards all right that's awesome okay we're gonna hold that down charlie's already all over it got my little cobbler hammer here Okay, now we're going to come over here to the vise. If we allow this to pop off the end, this will go flying apart, and that would suck. All right. We're going to install that like so. Install that like so. Now that's probably just fine, but this is going on an airplane. We cannot afford any failures. So we're going to take, since those are re, we're reusing these, we're going to kind of ping this in here. So we're going to kind of ping this over to make sure that we don't have any issues. With a center punch, we'll put a couple little center punches right here. Not much. Wow, that's really hard. Or maybe we're not. The steel is that hard. So we're just gonna make sure that's in there good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, you notice, see it ratchets. So when that, uh, that starter, it comes up, I'm not going to engage it right now, it engages, it spins the, uh, the engine starts, and it spins that like that, and it allows it to free wheel. That's kind of why it's called a ratcheting starter. All right. Now we took this apart and laid it out exactly how we took it apart. So we got some very high quality grease here. We're gonna kind of put a light bit of grease on there, not enough to fling all over the place, but to keep it lubed up for a long time. That's going on. Get some nice new grease, and boy, it loves new grease, doesn't it? There we go, okay. Same thing, Mismo. Like so. And this happens to be going on a Franklin aircraft engine, which is really a good aircraft engine, but they're not really made too much anymore. Alright. And that is going to go in there like so. And this can be kind of a pain in the butt too, really. Oh, 
Well, that could have hurt a lot. There we go. And see that collar comes back up and locks the clip so it can't come loose. All right. And the next step we're going to do is take the actual Bendix. Now they can use a lot of different, uh, they can create this, uh, make the starter into a lot of different type of starters. This is the head unit. You can buy a different uh, head for this with different number of teeth and so on and so forth. So they manufacture one starter and uh, it can apply to a lot of different units, right? Look at how nice that goes on there like that, okay? We don't need to grease that up really, but we'll put a little light layer just to prevent rust, all right? Just a little bit of a film. Not so much for lubrication, but for corrosion prevention. All right, that bad boy goes on there like that. Inspect this. Now people look at these and they take, they, they try to flatten these out. They're designed that way. They're, they're meant to put a little, uh, not just outward pressure, but downward pressure. So don't take channel locks and try to, to straighten that out. All right, and there is an up and a down. This portion goes up. Points up. So that folds down in there like so. I think so. Let's try it here. This is where if you had like a bunch of hands, it would be awesome. Dag on it. We're not even going to edit that out. We all make you, want you to make it think it's that easy. There we got her. Now you don't just want to count on that noise. You want to go down through there with a pick and really make sure that's seated in there well. Okay? And there you go. Ratcheting starter. Again, the biggest mistake everybody makes. They take and start spinning that on outwards. I'm not going to do it. And that's going to get stuck. Don't do that. Anyway, hopefully that was helpful to some folks. And uh, if you're not comfortable doing something like that, don't go take it apart. If you do take it apart, have a nice clean workbench and lay things out exactly as they come apart. Put arrows on it if you need to. Y'all have a great day. Thanks.